and we're going to start a Q&A. So let's see. I'm going to bring on Joe and Val. Get the trifecta. What's up, bro? Hey, what's can up, you hear me? Yeah, all right. We're all three on. What's up, guys? <laughs> what is going on, you degenerates, you freaking misfits, man, you crazy bastards? Dude, I've been up since like 3.45 today, so whenever I get a chance to eat, I'm eating. Bro, I don't even want to ask what you were up to last night, man. I don't even want to ask, bro. <laughs> Saki bombs was just the start. What's going on? Dude. I forgot we're doing the webinar. <laughs> <laughs> Val's got like, he's got like a corn dog in one hand, like a bowl of cereal in the other. Here we so, go again, man. Here it is again. We catch Val. He's like, let me finish this corn dog really quick. <laughs> Dude, I will say, I will say, I thought I was a snacker until I went to Hawaii with Val like a year and a half ago, dude. And I'm a big guy, dude. I'm like freaking 6'3", 200 pounds, man. Like you would think I would need to eat a lot, dude. Bro, me and Val, Val I've never met anybody that can eat as much as me, dude, and match me. Every time I looked at Val, he was like, you want to go get food? He's got a freaking bowl. He's got a ramen. He's got like a banana in hand. He's got snacks. He's got this. I'm like, holy shit, dude. Bro, me and Val at a buffet can actually make the person lose money. Isn't that what the, the, the new trend is? Intermittent, intermittent snacking? <laughs> so what, snack every hour like a full meal? <laughs> intermittent snacking, bro. <laughs> bro, eat intermittent keto. buffeting. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing here? I totally forgot, man. I'm so tired. I, so this is the thing with MIC, man. We, we love what we do. Dude, I, 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 I didn't want to go to work today, but I was like, dude, the, the team members are depending on me, so I got up after sleeping for two hours, helped everybody in the room. I'm still here. So, I mean, this is, you know, we, we love what we do here. Joe loves it too. He came back from vacation. Um, I like how you say it like you thought I wasn't coming back. <laughs> Dude, you're in Texas. Job, I, I, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, oh, fuck, Joe's in Texas. I go, I go out the um, – He's just like – He's just like totally written me off. Like, oh, he's dead. There's no chance he's. Dude, we, we get that. we get a call, we get a text from Joe, and he's like in freaking Brazil, and he's like, I'm starting my own service. Fuck you guys. I'm never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> we see it. He's got Facebook ads everywhere, and he's promoting inner lines and outer lines and shit like that. Hey, your your pipes didn't burst or anything, right? Everything's good. No, everything's fine. Yeah, is um, that's good. Uh, we were without power for about two days. No big deal. Um, <laughs> oh man, really, bro? It was cold, that's for sure. But that—that's hey, pretty the, much it. At least you know? the food in your fridge was okay. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. There's always a benefit. Yeah, <laughs> though, if it was just me and the wife, or like me and the you know the older kids, you know that'd be—I wouldn't have been like freaking out or anything because they were fine. But you know, with the newborn that's like four months old, I'm over here like panicking about making sure that a fire is always going because oh, we have a wood man. burning we have a one burning wood burning fireplace. So like that that was essential, man. I was but the problem was I ran out of firewood um because my firewood ended up like it was it was a lot drier than I was thought it was going to be. So it burned super fast. And so I ended up having to cut up a bunch of old lumber and like pallets and like, it, I was just burning wood. Anything I could find, I was burning it. Dang, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> you were hardcore, my friend. God, I mean, it so helped me jealous. clean out the garage. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not complaining. <laughs> we're talking about this is it the morning wood or the afternoon wood <laughs> <laughs> joe's like man i was burning wood all day what kind of wood hey you got nothing else to do all day bro except burn wood <laughs> Dude, we, got a oh, we, gotta, we gotta chill hr's in the house man she's about right. strict all of us. Yeah. Yeah. we got a question here it says um should we how should we think of the tab program should we think of the our tabs as mentors or should we think of them as um, not having the blind lead the blind? A tab is your trading accountability buddy. It's like tr a trading team. It's like a bunch of guys trading together. So you, your, jo your job is to keep one another accountable and treat it as if you are on the trading floor at Goldman Sachs. Working think of it like a study partner back in college or high school or wherever it was that you studied, or if you didn't study. A study partner. Or you're it, a 
or your alcoholic sponsor. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a recovering <laughs> addict. Um, I always addict. just think about it like this. This is your tab partner, bro. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> like, dumb and dumber. <laughs> Dale and what was it? Dale and who? <laughs> Will Ferrell and uh, I forgot the right, name. But guys. what was Brennan? Dale and Brennan. Dale and Brennan. Yes. <laughs> See, this is this is this is the new trader coming to the tab program. He's like, "Hey, man, I need another tab." It's like, this is the next. <laughs> <laughs> but you you divide the workload too. You know, you come in and there's there's over 850 videos to watch. So you divide the workload among among the well, among. Yep, the, Joe. Let, the, let, let me the show them that actually. You. Like one group, uh, there's a ta there's there's a trading accountability group um, with several traders in it, and they actually network to create like to meet up on zoom or inside the chat room in a little group and they have like a video that they'll all watch and then they'll make comments on what they think they learned from that video well and joe let me, joe let me say it like this right guys this is the mic face study guide dude you, you don't get in your head thinking okay i join mic is my tab partner going to be as bad as me dude everybody's going to benefit with somebody else because it's not like you're getting someone to just teach you trading, bro. What do you think that's the, that's, what do you think the video library and the commentary is all day in main trade? That's our job to teach you get a tab partner where you grow together, hold each other accountable on just homework. Hey, John, um, our homework tonight that we self prescribed ourselves was watch the first three videos of the MIC process and phase. Did you do that? Now let's talk about what we learned together. You see what I'm saying? Yep. And you man, not every yeah. tab is going to be, up for that so you know that that's why you <clears throat> that's why you can um if that if that tab does not work for you then you can ask to be partnered with somebody else i mean Absolutely. you can ask to go whichever direction you want to go you're not tied to this specific person let's say you want to do that program let's say you want to do that and you're like i really like the idea of that but that member doesn't want to do that or their work schedule doesn't line out you know you've got there's over 2000 members now. Um, and so there's, there's somebody out there that'll definitely be your buddy and run your trades through your tab partner. Two, yeah. two lines are better than one. That's what we use for you. Uh, and, and tell each other your, own, your rules, share your own watch list in the morning, yep. trading plans, all that stuff, guys, you guys are now, you know, a team. Yep. Second set and, of eyes, man. Any way you can help each other. And for Alex and myself, if, if you know, both of our, if both of us like the trade, you know, there's chances are the trade's going to work. But if one of us does not, we will come kind of like figure out why the other person does not like the trade. Dude. Yeah, that's all. Uh, why don't you like the trade? Or maybe I still take the trade, but I do it with like a third of the size that I normally would. Burning wood. Dude. Can't say it better myself. That's it, man. <clears throat> Guys, do you have any do you have any trading questions? Do you want to know why Bao shorted SYPR here? Like, this is your chance to ask Bao. This is your chance to ask me, Joe. Like, dude, like, you got us, man. What do you want to hear? What do you want to know? Why aren't you guys joining MIC? Like, what, give, we'll ask you questions. They haven't lost all their money yet. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're not down $9,000 on a position, right? <laughs> But the moment they lose all their money, they're going to join MIC and ask for a discount. <laughs> no, bro. They're going to beg for a free trial. That's just painfully see, true, To see man. if it fits their speed. Guys, this is, this is what we tell people, man. You join MIC not necessarily to learn our strategies. It's to learn the experience so that you do not have to go through all the mistakes that we had to go through when we started to learn, right? And that's yep. what experience is, man. You're paying for the experience, not necessarily just the, the videos. But there's just, I mean, learning on your own is just impossible, guys. I'm telling you right now, man. I, I consider myself pretty damn good uh, as an um, academic kind of guy. And I, I graduated with engineering, philosophy, and all that stuff. And there's stuff. I, w I didn't even know VWAP for like five years, dude. If someone fucking told me VWAP, I would have been much better trader a long time ago. I didn't know what the fuck VWAP was. Or just, there's, or just, there's just shit that you don't know. VWAP, man. Um, I mean, the thing I is, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know, right? Jose, and he was like, I don't fucking need VWAP. <laughs> who, who said that? <laughs> That's 
Because <laughs> I didn't even know what the fuck that was. I was Please. mentally doing VWAP in my head, dude. He was like, I made 1.3 million on Fannie Mae without VWAP, so lick my balls. That was like, fuck your deviation above VWAP, man. <laughs> no, it was like, fuck dude, your dude back, back, back then, I didn't even know what VWAP was because I was just a standard guy. I mean, I, there, there was no kind of like educational videos or the internet barely was the, around, right? <laughs> so you guys are very lucky now. <laughs> that was like Morse coding in his orders, dude. <laughs> I was actually doing that shit in my head, dude. And that's how I, that's how I came up with, with the lines. I came up with the lines because I'm like, fuck, man, where's this fucking place that people average out to buy? It turned out to be VWAP. It was a fucking indicator. I could have just put on. <laughs> <laughs> that was a human algo, dude. That will literally find the algos before they even start. He codes them in his head. And then he paid like four or $500 a month for Realtek because of the pivot points, which DOS had for <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> for free. <laughs> Seriously, but no one even knew about it, DOS. <laughs> so. Oh, man, dude. So this is a this is why you join. You join because fuck, dude. There's shit that you would never ever fucking know. I'm just telling you right now. There are guys who've been using fucking moving averages and Fibonacci's on a on an intraday scalp and figure out why it didn't work. I mean, fuck. So now these so now you see everybody drawing lines. You don't see a fucking moving average anymore. <laughs> moving average, bro. Any course that teaches moving averages is their saving grace. I, I promise you, they have no idea how to trade a chart, dude. Remember, indicators work on different time frames, different types of trades. So you have to figure out what type of time frame that you're trading. So if you're a swing trader, moving averages will work. You know, if you're going across like months, bro. Let me let me let me show on you. Like a, on like a fucking ten minute scalp. What the fuck are you gonna do? A one minute moving average? <laughs> dude, this see see that Bow just said it perfectly, dude. For different time frames, bro. If you're in, if you're a trader that's that's using RSI because you're swinging months on big caps, look, that's one thing. But these guys that have secret strategies and shit, like I even have an indicator, dude, for RSI. If I'm swinging a big cap for a month long, you know, if I get calls or puts on an option, right? Like that's very different shit, man. But for day trading, bro, there's no secret sauce like that. Are you kidding me? Like this, no. the secret sauce is just the fucking line and the minute chart, guys. It's true. It's true. The line chart. So something like that. Dude. I, I mean, I did to be honest, I didn't even know what the fucking candlestick. I started using line charts because I couldn't read a candlestick. Because I was <laughs> like, this is shit's too fucking complicated. But it turned out candles, uh, line charts work for me much better than candles. So I, I've gotten used to the lines. And so I, that's how I'm bouncing these things from the first bounce because of the lines. So if you did not know that from MIC, there's no way you would ever use a fucking line chart. Who uses a fucking line chart? No, you know what's funny about that, dude? Is like before MIC started, what, August 17th of what, 2018, right? So two and a half years ago is, dude, I had never in my life of five years before that heard the term pivot points. When you brought it famous into MIC two and a half years ago, bro, how many people on Twitter do we now see or anybody talking about lines, pivot points, hard stops, which we're never talking about every single thing possible we teach, everything. 10, so 30 is, rule. Yep. So this is why you join. You join because you wouldn't fucking know this shit. <laughs> but any questions, guys? I'm sick of telling, asking why you should join. I'm going to tell right now why. I don't join, dude. I think we're good. <laughs> we <haven't laughs> yeah, yeah, like you're good, dude. Don't, don't join MIC and learn how to make a fortune, whatever. Don't do it. You're good. I, you know, you know I'd rather just, Alex and I, I'd rather just take all your money, all the MIC members as well. <laughs> our, new, our new marketing, don't join MIC and learn how to make millions. <laughs> Seriously, dude. Seriously. Uh. Okay, Dante, what uh, what are we struggling with? How can I keep my money in my pocket? Six great, six green days, then one red day wipes it all out and more. Is there a rule to put in a hard stop to walk away? Maybe a number when I hit that negative number. Dante, this was the thing that I fucked up on, dude, for th first four years of my trading, dude. Make money, make money, make money, make money, make money, make money for months. Give it all back in one trade or a couple trades, maybe three trades, bro. You need hard stops in your trading. The reason why people don't talk about hard stops is one, two reasons. Number one, they don't use them. And number two, oh, but the, but the market makers can see where my hard stop is. Oh, really? So you want to give back your entire month in one trade or get faked out by a market maker every now and then? Uh, yeah, I'll you take the latter. You won't get swept, guys, if you know where to place your stops. Don't fucking put a stop at $5.01. You will get fucking stopped out. <laughs> 100%. 100%. Like, what's, is there an example today, Bal? Like, a, probably a good example for a hard stop. I think you hard stopped on one, right? Like, 
I was there... often one, but it's, it was not like an obvious place. You know? Well, well I, you actually, yeah, yeah. I, actually, I did. Let me show you. J F U. J fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> so I hard stopped. Yo, but fuck thing you. Is, oh, okay. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. So it, it hard stopped and came back down because I did it at an obvious place. I had a day break. That's because I I broke a rule. I was training this shit during zombie hour, so I had right to put the hard stop in. You see what I'm saying? So that's no, where'd you do it? Right here. Uh, shit. Let me let me take a photo of it here. Because what Bao's saying, guys, is what Bao's saying is if you stop out exactly where the high a day break are or the pre-market highs, you have to understand that things need a little bit of time to stuff in an area like that. So this is where hey, all the orders well, get swept. Think, think about this. If you're part of the herd, they're gonna swipe. They're gonna swipe you. So nice. I What's, made a video how to take a proper stop loss. That's so a swipe. I don't, I don't stop out at the prop at, at the obvious places. What I like to do is I actually do the reverse. So if people are stopping out, I'm actually mm -hmm. shorting there. So that's the swipe. That's what we're talking about, guys. And here's the thing. Again, Bow's right on that, but I'll go even further. Who gives a fuck even if they see your hard stops and swipe you every now and then? Bro, you're not going to give back a month of gains in one trade, dude. That's what we're trying to tell you guys. It's risk management above all else. I don't care if the market makers have an edge every now and then. I'm not giving back a freaking two weeks of my gains in one day. I'm you not going to do it. You have to put the hard stops in, and over time with experience, you'll know where – to put the hard stops, the reason you're getting stopped out is because you're sizing too big and you, so size down and widen your stops. That's what you will end up learning. And for the guy that asked, how do you, you know, the, the problem with this, you can be a consistent trader, but not be a profitable trader. Correct. That's because you can have a hundred days green in a row and get wiped out in the next day. So this is why you have to have a max daily loss yeah. broker side level. Okay. And that's usually set for maybe two days of loss, three days of loss at max. So you don't give back 10 days, max daily loss, call up your broker, figure out what your average gains are in a day. Don't do more than, I mean, you got, you don't lose more than three days. So if you're averaging 500 bucks a day, maybe your heart, maybe your max daily loss is 1500 bucks or 2000 bucks, right? Yep, and then it keeps you in the game, and if the worst happens in your trading career on that day, you get, dude, you're stopped out for $1,500. It's not going to bankrupt you. That's the whole point here. Val, what's your analogy of the crocodile, man? You want to say that for people who've never heard it? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, man. <laughs> well, dude, it's like, it's like if you're trading, right? So, like, say Bao didn't hard stop out right here, right? Say he's getting in. What he's doing right here is nibbling. He's put, he's, he's at the ridge of the, the safari, you know, he's, he's looking at a pond and, and there's probably alligators in there and he knows there's danger. He puts a little toe in and then the freaking alligator grabs his toe. He can stop out right here and lose a little pinky toe or lose his big toe, or he can keep adding and keep adding and not hard stop. And then the freaking crocodile is in and up to his nutsack. He keeps adding, he keeps adding like that guy down 9k on RCL with a 30k account. And guess what, bro? Your, your torso is already getting digested by the crocodile. Hard yep. stops keep you from losing more than a pinky toe. So that's how you save your money, guys. When you're up six days in a row, maximum daily loss broker side level will protect Correct. that six days. Also, take money out on a regular basis. There's only wire so much out. money you need to trade. So take the fucking money out. Then wire out. I'm not kidding, guys. Like, screenshot this. Seriously. Wire the fuck out. Alex makes... What I mean, if, if you take his his performance and do it on an annual average every single year, he from last year, which he made what now like 1.5 mil. So say he did that every single year. Do you realize he's doing that, guys, with a 35k account? So let me explain. Alex, his process when it comes to a PL standpoint, I'm not talking about how he trades. When he has a $35,000 account and it gets up to 50,000, he wires out back down to 35 and then does it over and over and over again. So Alex's performance last year was $1.5 million. If you think about it, using a $35,000 account, that's the point. He keeps hard stops in check. So when he has the, you know, regular four and 10 and random, you know, $30,000 PL days, the most he's losing guys every now and then is like, three grand, like a couple to maximum three days of his trading. That's how he's able to wire out, wire out, wire out. And by the end of the year, dude, he's fucking Barry Bonds. He's dropping home runs and home runs and home runs because he's smart. He's not letting the crocodile get anything up to a nut sack and a torso. It's just barely getting a fingernail, which as you can see, this is what Bao did right here. Crocodile didn't even get a toenail right there. You know what I mean? Like that's the whole point.
So I could rant on this all day, but to protect your account is, is so freaking important. You have no idea. So Dante, when you ask, is it a dollar amount? Look, brother, you have to, you have to get comfortable with a certain amount of size as per your account. You can definitely hit up the Joe Kelly trading basic series on our website to see what you should be risking as per your account size, but it's not based on a PL matter. It's well outside of a max daily loss, which you should issue by your broker. It's based on where the charts telling you to get out, brother. Does that make sense? <laughs> That's funny as hell. <laughs> there's a vi there's a video we I made on how to properly take a stop loss. Yep. And for anybody who's wondering like where to find those, myinvestingclub.com, videos tab, then you have a search feature of literally everything in here. So you want to go stop loss, bro. Stop loss orders. Search. Boom. There you go. That's how to do it. That's how to do it. any category in here. Yep. Good, man. Good. And, and look, man, if, if we're harsh, it's because we want you to learn. In fact, I'm blunt with members all the time because I'm like, dude, what you're doing here works. What you're doing here doesn't. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, man. I'm not going to pussyfoot around. I want you to be really good. Like, I want you to eliminate this shit that's going to that's gonna hinder your, your P&L curve, your, your journey as a trader, man. We're here to really guide you guys as much as we can, man. Seriously. And again, guys, we have small caps, we have large caps and options. So if small caps is like not your flavor of ice cream and you're like, man, I just, I'm not comfortable holding these. I'm not comfortable trading with them. They're a little bit too whipsaw. Guys, we have so many large cap strategies. We got Joe in here educating all day. We've got swing traders, you know, a swing trading room. I'm even taking up options these days. And I love them, but I love them for different reasons. And I'm not pushing that too hard. I'm just saying that I've found, you know, a real comfort level between all three. So if I see market conditions are absolutely tanking and people are screaming bear market two days ago, I can see that there's opportunity on an option standpoint. Maybe the, maybe this small cap market's slow and nothing's bouncing. That's the whole point is find your flavor of ice cream, right? We have that for you. And we have points of contact in every form. What if I told you real chairs don't use candlestick charts? Yeah, bow for 20 years, dude. <laughs> Bro, hopefully, hopefully people are listening, man. There's not much more we can do, man, except freaking open accounts in their own name and force them to join MIC. <laughs> Bell, how's the corn dogs, man? Uh, I, I lost track of time at 3 p.m., so therefore we should be careful on the trade. So these are the rules that we created. So these are things that took us millions of dollars of losses to to know and find out like the zombie rule, things like that. So those are the reasons you join because there's no fucking way you will ever fucking know unless you lose a lot of money. And more importantly than the money, man, just the time of beating your brains in. Think about how many years traders treaded water until they sacrificed and, you know, swallowed their ego and said, dude, help me, please teach me what I need to know because what I'm doing is just not working. So, you know, yeah, the money lost, you know, learn from the money that we've all lost together to teach you guys the correct way. But what about the time? How much time did we waste? You're, you're not going to, that's the thing. After, after a certain amount of loss, you're going to give up. And then it's going to yep. be a very shame. It's going to be a shame because why didn't you get educated? Trading is just like any other vocation, guys. You think you can fucking weld metal together without taking a class? You think you can become a fucking CPR expert without taking a CPR class? I mean, the doctor, lawyer, you, you need to be educated. You know, anything that's a fucking skilled, skilled profession, trading is a skilled profession. You need, you need some sort of training. And mentoring. Dude, th th this is literally what traders look like when they don't ask for help and try to do it themselves and then tread water for two years. Literally, they're on their last breath, man. Anytime um, I've ever talked to somebody on like social media and they're not a member of MIC, right? And they're like, Hey Tosh, you know, I want to come into MIC, but dude, I'm on the verge of quitting trading. And I go, well, are you a member of MIC? You know, somebody will hit me up randomly and they'll be like, no. And I go, well, how long have you been trading? And they'll be like, dude, five years. I just don't get it. But I've seen and watched your guys, YouTube, you know, free content by the way, which is nothing compared to the paid and what you're going to get actually as a member. And it's like, you know, I, I fart around here. I see this. I kind of check in every now and then, but I've been failing for five years. And I go, bro, the only reason why you're on the verge of giving up is because you keep trying to do this alone. You're like a candle that's on its last breath, dude. It's like, once you are, start to, you know, join something like MIC, right? You join MIC 
and you start to see how wrong you've actually been, all the barriers that you've had built up in your head of what you think is correct are getting broken. And you start seeing all this momentum of yourself growing as a trader and really start growing um, at least on an intellectual basis and learning rather than seeing the money first. Just I'm just talking about learning and really understanding the correct method. Well then dude, then you're on your way and it feels a new excitement that you can really start taking into your trading and you'll have a rebirth in your trading career, but don't be that candle dude. That's on its last breath. And you're like, man, I, I just don't know what to do. Dude, suck it up. Join MIC, eliminate ego and figure out how to trade the correct way. By the way, look at all this volume. You see this volume jump guys. This is how you judge if a broken stock is kind of coming back into play. Now I hope you're not fighting this. <laughs> it's not reversal on it anymore. When these start to test the 30, I'd say the 40 to 50% levels of the main volume levels, that's when you have trouble. And this is, this, this, I'm not saying this is super trouble, but I'm saying it could be because the time that we're in right now is not exactly the time you should be opening up a bunch of shorts. So just be careful. Just be cautious if you're shorting like, like Bao does. If you did short a level like this, which I don't always recommend, make sure you're hitting it at the lines of resistance, which this just stuffed into again, that 550 and those previous resistance points that were set before you see what I'm saying. So but on something that's garnering volume in chat rooms and stuff, they're trying to squeeze everybody late day so this can gap up after hours, then gap up on Monday. So then they could squeeze all of these shorts that have been comfortably holding from 789 to, you know, 550, wherever we are right now, where they're in the money. You guys, you guys follow that? Does that make sense? They're trying to squeeze all these shorts under VWAP. <clears throat> but I just, I don't know if they're going to have the type of follow through and demand. Dude, there's not enough volume. And that was a huge stuff right there in the 550 and previous resistance points. And I know Val probably got some. I knew it. I need a sicko. <laughs> Val, you're sick in the head, dude. <laughs> I think Joe and I have known Val long enough that if there's a move to milk, he will milk it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. This is why, this is why, dude, to get Val away from computers, we have to be a freaking like cowboy wrangler. Like, you know, when they get those freaking, dude, they, they, they get that, what is it, the lasso, and they ring it around his neck and pull him off the horse, dude. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> yeah. That's the only way to separate Val from his computers, dude. You have to freaking tie a rope around his neck and then freaking pull him out of the chair. <laughs> it's funny, dude. True story, man. Every time we have to fly somewhere for like, or every anytime Bao has to fly somewhere, right? Like whether it's MIC, whether it's a meetup, you know, he's just going on vacation, bro. He will miss, he, he will almost miss his flight. He will be on board within like two seconds to spare every single time he flies because you can't rip him away from his fucking trading setup, dude. <laughs> Late to the airport, forgot to pack clean clothes, left his meal at the airport because he's racing so fast because he was trying to trade. <laughs> I was like, dude, I've never met anybody more excess, obsessed with anything in life than Bao <laughs> with trading. It's like, Joe, dude, wouldn't you want that to be your mentor? You, you want your mentor to be some egotistical guy that doesn't really care about trading and just has a love for money? Dude, you think Bao gives a fuck about money? Bao is probably the richest person I've ever met that actually doesn't give a shit about money. <laughs> right. He just trades for the love of it, dude. For those of like, you with questions on how much the service costs or how much it costs to join the community, visit our website, yep. linebestclub.com. And at the top in the navigation bar, click join now and right everything's here. there. Right here, guys. Or you can text my business line and we can talk about it. Um, as it is a case to case basis for a couple things. I know, you know, like, I'll just give you an example. If someone just joined annual membership and they're like, Tosh, I really need the accelerator course as well. Is there something you can do for me? I might be inclined to help him out a bit. You know, again, man, I, I, I try to help people as much as I can, especially during these times of the pandemic and all that. So, you know, I'll talk to you, man. If, if you feel you really need some, we'll talk about it. it's case to case, but um, I try to do bundle deals as best I can right now. I actually have a new one where if you guys want to come into the club, I'm actually doing a bundle deal between the accelerator course and your first month of the MIC. If you get both, I will give you a really nice promo on that. So just, just text me, man. I'm, I'm here to help, man. Seriously. Me coming out to get DoorDash trading all day. Yeah. Trading. There you go. Get some 528 covers from a 557. Solid.
again, man, this is not rocket science, guys. A little bit of bullion comes in, so don't go crazy on size. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna trade it, because this isn't reversal hour where shorts have an extreme edge, what you do is you throw feelers so you don't get caught. So obviously, if this would have broke VWAP, I know Bow's smart. He would have been stopping out, but he knows that shorts, this is still really broken. And if you want to play it, you can throw some feelers on. You can throw probably one third or one quarter of your size and get a nice scalp. And that's exactly what he did. So the reason why, you know, Bow can post fills and me and Joe could comment it on it all day. It's not because, oh my God, this is, this is some rocket science. This is some secret format. Dude, it's just, it's price action. We know price action. We know how Bow trades. And this is what we teach every single day. Bow can post fills. And I know exactly what he was saying. This is read to me like a book. I don't even need to see his commentary because I know price action. I know what Bow's looking for, right? Like this is like a love letter to the, to the chart. Does that make sense? Yep. 550 line is the line we mentioned all day long. And so he puts his fantasy orders there. Yep, and, the, and whoever put the 551 got swiped. Yep, correct. I wouldn't even be stopping out at 551 if I followed MIC process. I'd stop out of VWAP. That's what I mean. Yep. Is you would not be stopping out with the herd if you followed MIC process. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. What Joe's saying, yeah, yeah. Most people would be like, oh, no, if 550 breaks, I'm going to stop out. Nope, you got to half dollar. Let me stop out on the break at a half dollar. No. Nope. Yeah, yeah, definitely not, dude. Specifically not. And anytime, guys, again, remember what we talked about swipes. If it's a new – okay, so, like, say you're shorting – so I'll, I'll give you an example, right? Let me remove all these and redraw. So what Bao was saying earlier, right? Like where to put your stop losses. If you're shorting, say, um, something like, th like this on a pop, right? And you're like, dude, you don't give 789 as your risk. I, $8 whole numbers right there. I'm gonna give 805. Because if, if this, dude, that's a really big resistance level. Not only is it a high a day, the, all these swipes are gonna be at like 790, 792, right? Like 789. I need to give it a little bit of room, but just in case it breaches that hole in half dollar mark, sometimes it breaches by one or two cents. I'm going to give this to 805. And if it stuffs hard again, I know, dude, I'm solid, but I'm not going to give it 789 as my stop. If you did that, dude, just put half there. You know what I mean? Like, but again, you have a really good chance of getting swiped. That's the whole point of what we're talking about. Don't stop out with the herd. Stop out where the chart's telling you. So if you have to size down a little bit to a company for that extra 15, 20 cents of risk, this is the shit you pre-plan. You don't do this on the fly. You don't short here and go, oh shit, well, okay, 789, oh, I'm gonna get swiped. I better raise it to 805, but shit, now I'm down a lot more than I thought. No, you pre-plan this shit, dude. Oh, Bao just said it without me even seeing it. Size down, widen your stops. That's my stop out point, not 789. Because here's what's gonna happen. You set it for 789, they swipe this shit to 795 and then you get a stuff candle. Dude, you are going to be wanting to flip your desk over because technically you're right, you're quote unquote right on your trade, right? But again, there's a very big difference between right and profitable. Are you still in the trade on the right side because you put your stops in the right place, you scaled it appropriately, you did the correct position sizing, et cetera, and so forth. There's a lot to this. But, and, and if this is sounding like it's complicated to anybody, bro, it's not, we're just hitting you with a lot of information today. It's actually a lot of really fundamental, simple shit to understand. We're just giving you a lot. <laughs> That's the whole, we're just giving you a lot. How are these webinars free? <laughs> bro, That's, I ask myself that every single week. How are these for free? Joe, what do you think, man? You have anything to say? Anything to add? I got nothing to add, man. 30%, man. If it's over VWAP, use 30% of your size. Stay safe, man. There's not much more we can teach you guys, seriously, when it comes to that. Till literally yesterday, I struggled understanding how many shares to buy on my risk level, so I understood it and came up with a chart. Uh, hit me up if you need it. Sweet. You probably got a lot of that from the Joe Kelly trade. Uh, like, dude, we got resources for you guys. That's awesome. And then share it with other members. Help each other. That's the whole point. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Val's like <laughs> trading five stocks right now. Val, you better be safe. We're your tab partners right now. It's too late in the day to be too aggressive on the short side, man. For the so in regards to that table, for those of you that have smaller accounts and you're trying to grow it exponentially, your intuition is to try to maximize your share size 
while minimizing your risk to grow it faster. Um, and in order to learn as a trader, I, I think that's rather counterintuitive. Um, I think it's important to know how much you'll lose based on the size or number of shares that you have and how much money you're risking. I think it's important to know that, but I don't think that um, you should be forming a process around that system. I think the best approach is something that Austin talked about in his webinar. My gosh, it was probably a year and a half ago uh, where he talked about sizing and he talked about the importance of just using an extremely small number of shares in the beginning and that's all that you trade. So if it's one share, that's all that you trade. You trade one share only. It doesn't matter the setup. You In the beginning, you don't know the difference between a trash setup and something that is just God's gift to man in right. the stock market. You don't know the difference yet. So it's extremely important to not try to focus on maximizing your returns by having this like like uh, formula approach mathematical approach to the to the to the uh, to your share size um, it's more important to learn how to trade and be comfortable in the trade with the size that you have and you take it step by step you take it one step at a time today i'm going to use one share and i'm going to use one share until i am 1000 percent confident in these setups and then i'll go to two shares because one share to two shares is a hundred percent increase guys in yep. terms of percentages that's a huge increase okay that's the same as going from 100 shares to 200 shares or 500 shares to a thousand shares or a thousand to two thousand two to four four to eight eight to sixteen that's a hundred percent increase in size that's not easy to do mentally if you're used to just trading this size right here so for those of you that trade options buying one contract is difficult shares. when you want to hold for a long period of a move because you can't take profits as the move goes on. So you end up buying two contracts, but that is a hundred percent increase on risk. Exponentially different in contracts for sure. Yeah. And even Especially in shares, something like one Tesla share, programs. having two shares versus one share is going to yield um, a hundred percent larger risk and a bigger return. If so, this is a good question to kind of segue out of this is if you were entering the market now to trade for the first time, where would you start? Um, honestly, everybody's going to have a different answer on this, but I want to, yeah, Joe, you go yours and I'll go mine. If I knew the MIC process, I would go to large caps and I would go to large caps because I, I firmly, I firmly believe that market is more forgiving for those trying to learn how to trade. Like if I was 99% long biased, I'm trying to learn how to trade. I know the MIC process. I know my entries are decent. Um, I've just got to tweak some things. I, that market is more forgiving because three out of four stocks follow the market and the market is designed to go up over time. So that's kind of my rationale behind that is you don't have to be as perfect as you do as a short seller in small caps. I would not be a long bias trader in small caps in the beginning. I think that is not the approach because it takes a massive amount of skill to be a long bias trader in small caps because you're innately hoping for that next black swan and you get too greedy and you can't just take these 20 or 30 or 40 cent gains. Um, so I would be in large caps and I would be trading one share trying to learn. I'd go with a commission free broker. That way I don't get whacked on that stuff. I'd probably go to E-Trade 
and I'd be trading one share. All right. So my opinion is just open up a Coinbase and get a Dogecoin. <laughs> no, but like, <laughs> like, bro, that's the real place to start, baby. <laughs> so realistically, guys, realistically. Coin, like, Reddit thread, deep fucking value. Now you're uh, talking, baby. That's the best way to start with the best <laughs> mentors, right? The best way to start is what Joe just said. If you know the MIC umbrella process or you come in and then you take the time to learn it. I love what Joe said, but I think it's the first bounce specifically and the long side of big caps as well. Because here's what's gonna happen, guys. What you can do is a lot of guys that start out with us have a really small account, right? And if you understand how stocks move, you know, you take one month, take two months just to learn, just to watch the education, watch the commentary every day. Don't even open a brokerage if you don't want to for the first month or two. Learn, watch the accelerator, understand how price action works. And then dude, if you have a bigger account, you're like, okay, you know what, man, I, you know, I make good money in my job. I have a great salary. I have a really good salary. I'm going to, I'm going to throw in 30,000 into an account tomorrow. Great. There's a lot of guys that can do that. Then there's guys that are like, you know what, man, I only have two to 5,000 in my name. Guess what, dude, you can still extremely benefit from MIC because while, as you know, Joe basically mentioned, but I'll go in a little bit more detail guys with options, you can trade, you can trade Tesla, you can trade Netflix with a $5,000 account. You're just trading the option premium on them. So what I'm saying is, is learn the long side of big caps or the, or the long side of small caps and master that first bounce or master the long side. And then once you get better and you really start to see how stocks move, I think the easiest setup in the world, and I posted this today and dude, literally is SLRX. This is one of the stocks today. Look at this, look at this. I put this in pre-market. This is what I posted in pre-market. I said, guys, these are the levels I want to scale today. These are, these are the levels. If it gets up there, that's it. Look what happened in the morning. This is a nail and bell from a, from a move that Joe and I talk about every single freaking day. If a stock is way under VWAP and it's super weak, comes in with a little bit of volume, it has an expected, quote unquote expected, nothing's 100%, it should fail at VWAP into the next top. There's the next top. Now, if I go into the main trading chat real quick and I just go all the way up to the beginning, let me show you. I'm going to go into full detail on this real quick. Uh, I got to find it. I know, I know I saw it earlier. Just give me a second. It was super early. Oh, I said, look guys, I posted, I said, guys, and this is when it just happened. I said, who nailed it? Boom. Members. Jay Trigger nailed it. Uh, nice when Tosh took some at 257. Hugo nailed it. Uh, Jake Edson nailed it. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. He's like, thanks to all you post. I'm like, dude, it's not about what I put. I want you guys to learn. I don't want to take credit for anything. I don't care about the fucking credit, dude. It's the last thing I give a shit about. I want you guys understanding how these, whoa, GME, damn, what's happening? Damn, some people just got bailed out. <laughs> My whole point, guys, is don't, ri don't risk your money on bullshit like GME, right? Like, don't just go YOLO. I'm going to long this and hope it goes to 150. Learn a simple process. We, when you join MIC, I, we, Joe, myself, Bao, we will teach you every single day the easiest, simplest, the, the shortest possible linear focus to make money every single day. And like I just showed you, if you're brand new and you're having trouble, or maybe you've been a trader for a long time and you have to get rid of bad habits, bro, do this move every single day for a month. You won't take an L, maybe you'll take one or two. You will build confidence in your style and then you can venture out to anything. But I totally recommend what Joe said. Start with the long side, start in big caps, gravitate to order over to small caps, try it all in a simulator, see what feels right for you and do it. If you have a small count, there's nothing outside of what you can do because you can do small caps easily and you also have options. Bro, there's nothing off limits. There's nothing off the table at MIC. And if you're wise, you don't just come in and expect to bet the farm and use your account to start making money and start, try to trade real money in the first two days. You get a month of MIC, you get the accelerator course, and guys, you learn the old fashioned way with education first. I'm passionate about this because I don't want you, some of you idiots get gambling away your money, man. I don't want that for you. I want you guys to freaking learn, dude. Whether it's MIC, whether it's somewhere else, invest in your education. For $9.97, and I'll even throw you a deal if you text me today because you watched this webinar. So for a certain price, dude, I'm gonna hook you up with a membership. You're gonna get this under $1,000, man, and you're gonna have everything you need to know for the next 100 years because price action psychology doesn't change. 
the patterns don't change, bro. Bow's been trading the same shit just across two different sectors in the OTCs and NASDAQ for 20 years. Like, I, 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 could, I could lose my voice talking so much about this shit. Let's see what Bow's doing. What's he doing? Bow, I knew you were fighting that, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, quiet. And when Bow goes quiet, he's focused. He is focused. Using that six line, though. Nice. Nice job, man. Nice job. See, in the morning, dude, so it's like in the morning, say this had overhead, Bow could be super aggressive on the way up because shorts have the edge in the morning. So I know that during this time frame, because it's towards late day and he doesn't have as much edge as he does in the morning and longs have a little bit of edge, he's sizing down. I know Bow's probably using only one-fourth to one-fifth the size he's using in the morning, so it affords him what's called like basically a scale zone, right? So not a lot of traders can scale from 520 you know, to five, you know, 60, but Bao can because he's doing what's smart. He's sizing down, then he's paying himself on the way. This is called front side shorts require front side covers. So maybe he has a small position left from like an average of 540 something here, then he's averaging up, he's going here and then he's paying himself on washes. That's called an expected move into resistance level six, the whole number into this right here at about 630, which he probably would have scaled up to. That's the point. No fighting, bro, I waited. Nice, very nice. Dude, the whole point is if you guys understand process, that's all you need. That's all you need. Yep. <laughs> no, I thought you were fighting for a second. I was like, don't make me slap you, bro. It's too late in the day. Nice. And now Bao knows not to pretty much go back because it's too late in the day, man. To get super aggressive right now in trading is just a death sentence just in case, you know, Wall Street Bets comes in and it issues 5 million people to buy up SYPR because then the next GameStop and then boom. Your trading career is over in one day. That's the whole point. So now you got shit like GME and sympathy costs running. And it's just it's ridiculous. Dude. Is AMC running too? I think that was running earlier, right? Yeah, it's been running. It's been like a little bit of a bend. GME's halted. What this is going to afford is a nice short opportunity for traders in the coming days, maybe even tomorrow, and option puts for those who are ballsy enough to do so. But Again, guys, don't gamble. Like, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about simple process every single day. If you're brand new and you want something you can repeat every day, you need to screenshot that. Just screenshot it. Just screenshot that and focus on that every single day. And you will be a profitable trader if you have risk management as well. Joe, am I wrong in this or not? Thousand percent agree. Dude, like how much more simple can we teach this? Seriously. Bro, you could screenshot this and be a profitable trader on that setup alone. Alone. And of course, there's so much more to it than just like, just a screenshot. Oh, now you have a profitable trading career. There's more to it. Like, and we're going to teach you that when you come into MIC. But I mean, seriously, this is a profitable trading setup. <laughs> this is almost all you need sometimes. But again, man, that setup might not be here in a, in a while. You know what I mean? Like you never know. So you have to adapt. You have to do things. Jay Trigger, Exactly, dude. Yeah, I remember that. Exactly. Oh, the death candle, bro. That's my favorite. Outer lines or death candle hit the bounce. It's as simple as that, bro. This is my process every single day I've used for the last four years as a short seller. I like on this particular chart that he saved from a webinar a long time ago. This is a perfect example. It opens up, you know, around this area, squeezes up outer lines, or you wait for the death candle tank, hit a pop. Simple as that, bro. One option one or option two. It's not much more crazier than that. Spy topping out a little bit. All right, do you guys have any closing questions? Because I'm sure Bao wants to go eat some food. I do as well, and we are exhausted. <laughs> dude, my throat, my voice is gone, dude. Any last questions, guys, for our team? If we haven't proven to you today how simple trading can be and what we have to offer at MIC and what you can benefit by being a member, Dude, just quit your trading career, bro. Seriously, how much more of a skeptic or how much like, like you don't know what you don't know, bro. I don't know how much more we could have proven it to you today. Bow's live trading, what we discussed, options. We give you setups. We teach you psychology. Kept the traditional live trading. on. <laughs> Bow's superstitious, guys, so he will not break this tradition, I'm telling you. I am too, man. I, I wasn't a superstitious guy until I met Val and I was like, man, maybe there is something to this. <laughs> I made enough money for an annual membership just trading during the webinar. Knock on wood. Awesome stuff, bro. 
Awesome stuff. I'll take Venmo, please. And uh, I will be going to get a steak after this. So you can just Venmo, uh, you can just Venmo Mastro's for me. We'll just cut the middle, man. <laughs> you don't need size, guys. It's just the process, seriously. It is just the process. Midtown knows, Tony knows, Tay knows, Deckard knows. Anybody who's been in here for two weeks knows it is not the size. I don't care if you use 10 chairs, guys. I don't care if you use 10,000. If you have the same process with the lines, Kevin knows. Kevin definitely knows. I've been seeing his progress big time. Shout out Kevin, dude. I remember when he was in his week one, which was like, oh God, dude, Kevin, what, half a year? It's probably seven months ago. And I was guiding him on like how to even shorter, how to get started. And dude, I've seen huge progress, man. Size does not matter. It doesn't. T 10 months, 10 months. Okay, there we go, bro. But that's the point, guys. Uh, so we have, when Val says, you know, talk about the call stuff. So what this is, guys, is let me actually, I think we have it on here or uh, we did. Um, what the calls are is we do trader calls every single day. So if you see in the main trading chat, guys, or after hours, what we do is we post in here is we post um, during certain times. So my time slot is three to four Eastern Standard Time every single day, Monday, Tuesday. Well, sorry, not on Wednesdays because I'm here with the webinar, but Monday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And then Joe Kelly will post, you know, Tom Diesel will post, James, all the guys. And every now and then you'll be able to catch a moderator every single day, almost every single day for a trader call. So I'll say, hey guys, I'm about to line up trader calls. The first three, because that's all I have time for, the first four, um, it's first come, first serve, hit me up and we'll get on a 10, 15 minute phone call. And guys, we'll just have a one-on-one -on -one webinar like we're doing right now, but we can, we can do whatever. We send me charts. We can talk about whatever. We can talk about sizing, whatever's going wrong in your trading, whatever's going right. So you have to understand the, the whole implementation of MIC is mentorship. Our freaking, our dude, our logo, for God's sakes, look at our logo. The mentorship is the shortcut to success. So everything we do, you know, this is about teaching Alex together. You know, that's, that's what this was based on. That's a fun fact for those who don't know about two and a half years ago, when we created MIC, Alex was like, bro, uh, let's do this cool logo. So I, you know, I, I, we hit up, we hit up this guy, we got this made and I sent him my level two, I screenshot him. I don't think you can't see it because it's so small, but this is C. I remember, I'll never forget it, dude. This is CHFS on some random ass day, dude. I just took a screenshot off my freaking computer, but this is CHFS. <laughs> That's our logo. So, like, the whole point is is mentorship is key to success, guys. So, whether you need PMs answered, which are open all day, whether you need a trader call. That's what you sign up for. That's what you pay us. You pay us to teach you how to make money in the markets and how to have a trading career. And I'm going to end with that, man. It's powerful, dude. So if you guys need help, we're here for you. We've proven to you. We've proven to you again. It now it's up to you to actually utilize us. Uh, you guys are giving me fucking promo now, man. Damn, that's crazy. Yep, this is what happens when sympathies run, bro. Uh, for those who are not familiar, sympathies like AMC or Koss have ran with GME before. So if GME, you know, shoves a hot poker up Wall Street's ass, the others are going to move, but at a much slower fashion, but they're still going to move and they're not nearly as powerful as Bao has always made famous is the sympathies are, ne they never go as far and they're never as powerful. So if you did want to short something like, like this, GME is not your focus, AMC, Koss, and all the sympathies are because they're just moving in a coordinates like, a freaking, you know, like, like the first order and, you know, Star Wars, it's like the freaking emperors walking through the aisles. That's GME. And then you got freaking Kylo Ren, you know, you know, all that stuff. So that's what it basically is, man. You got Kylo Ren, you got the stormtroopers, which are all those damn sympathies. So, uh, oh shit. Tay in AMC calls from last week, she saw what was happening. She was paying attention. She got in early. I still to this day think that Tay's psychic and does tarot cards or something because this girl is always in before things start actually freaking breathing. It's crazy. Tay's literally like a freaking gypsy or something. <laughs> but guys, we'll end with this. You guys are awesome. We love doing these every single week. If you got any benefit from this, just imagine what you get with a paid membership or if I hook you up with the accelerator course or, you know, uh, we'll do something for you, man. Whatever you need, an annual membership, you know, fill out our lifetime application. If that's what you're looking for, I'll review that. We'll get back to you. Uh, we're here for you. And now we are going to go in after hours, shoot the shit. I'm going to go grab a lunch. I'll post my lunch in here. We'll post memes. 
and uh and dude we'll do the damn thing man so oh and here's nico dude nico on uh eight year overnight success story dude awesome i'll uh definitely take a listen to that soon again so guys we'll see you in after hours go network go uh Go have fun. Go spend time with your families. Don't obsess over charts 18 hours a day. It's much simpler than you think, but get your psychology right. And the last thing I'll say, the last thing is because I actually gave this advice to a lot of people recently. Um, when someone was hitting me up and he was like, dude, I'm treading water for a while. I never trust my lines. Guys, not everything about trading is in the charts. 90% is in the charts in the education. Read a book on discipline, not trading discipline. Read a book on how to be a disciplined person. Read a book on how to be a trusting person. Read a book on self-love because when you start to trust yourself in life, you'll trust your lines in trading. All right, guys, I'll leave you with that. Thanks, guys. Thanks for showing up. See you, Joe. See you, Bell. Later, bro. Have a good one. See you, bud.